match. Undercutting less proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before... 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday morning. You know what is a good feeling, Robin? A really good feeling that you probably can relate to. It's when you're in your car and you see the fuel gauge and the little red needle is, is pegged past the F. In other words, your tank is full. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Isn't that a good feeling? I love that you feeling. Know, and, and you know what I do that's stupid, really? Because when I was a kid, there was no light that came on that said, you you know, you're almost empty. There's a light that comes on now, right? A little gas pump yeah. light, right? Yeah. Well, I never had that. None of us had that when we were younger, right? And, and, and I never <laughs> depended on that. But now, even though it'll be on the E... <laughs> Our guest is probably going, where are we going with this? But, well, he reminds me that I need to get some gasoline. That's what's going on in my head right now. Uh, but, you know, the uh, it goes to the E. Okay, stop and get gas. Not anymore. It's on the E. Yeah, but the light's not on. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. I can go a little farther. <laughs> That's the way I Not drive. a good idea. I did that this morning, and, and the light came on. I said, wow. Well, I think I can get to work. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy to even depend on that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Our next guest has been with it's us before. Ned Bowman is the Florida Petroleum Marketers and Convenience Store Association. Well, he's with them. He's not the association, but he's with them. He's up in Tallahassee, I think. He's going to talk to us about, I think, a polling, uh, I guess a survey that was released yesterday by the Partnership for a Better Energy Future, which is a coalition of 175 Members representing nearly every segment of the economy in the, in this country find that voters in Florida and nationwide have major concerns about the EPA's proposed greenhouse gas regulations and are unwilling to pay even a dollar more for energy in exchange for these new rules. I just read that paragraph, but I wanted to read it. I think it's important because it, because it came out yesterday. So let's say good morning to Ned and, and uh, see how his gas gauge looks. Good morning, Ned. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Larry. Hi, Robin. How's, Hi. Your, how's your gas looking? <laughs> uh, I think I drive like you, Larry. It's uh, <laughs> the way the light goes on. By the way, aren't all gas stations now convenience stores? Um, in no, 99% of the uh, uh, gasoline sold in the state of Florida is sold through convenience stores. Yeah, I don't. I can't think of one that's, that's a, an old-fashioned garage slash gas station. I can't think of one. Mm-mm. There, there's a couple left. Really? really? But not that many. Well, that's, through the panhandle. That's okay, because I like getting coffee and gas at the same time. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us. Yeah, this report, I, I had a message on my phone this morning. I'm so glad Robin got this email because I forgot to tell her about the phone message alerting me. The message alerted me to this new, uh, this new report. So does, does the report surprise you? It sounds like something we probably could have guessed. Yeah, I think the, the biggest issue that we see, it, especially from the convenience store side, is, you know, we work very well with DEP, with the Environmental Protection Agency, and we think that this is just an overreach, and we think that the program should be based upon what Florida needs, not what the country needs. I don't think uh, uh, Florida really needs to implement a policy that's going to work for Connecticut or Vermont or Maine or Alaska. We need a s- uh, specific uh, energy policy and um, program for the state of Florida. You okay. know, we're, we're unique. You just can't go across the border and grab power out of Texas. You know, it just doesn't work that way. Okay. Where you can do it in Nebraska, go to Iowa and get power. Okay, so fill in the blanks. What, what kind of policies are they proposing uh, that we really don't need and we should be expressing a, a voice against? Uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to regulate the greenhouse gas emissions and they're trying to drop the standards um, and the cost benefit of dropping the standard is going to raise the cost of the cost of electricity. So if you're paying, you know, 15 cents a kilowatt now, you, your rates are going to go up substantially. And then the convenience store side of it, that's the third largest cost that we have. So it's going to cost the increase of gasoline. It's going to cost increase the cost of the cup of coffee that you'd like to go in and get. Hmm. Uh, and we just think that the benefits, you know, um, aren't there. We think that the policy should be made by Florida specific so that our members, um, our legislators, 
and our DEP officials and the governor work together and formulate a policy that makes sense for the state of Florida. Will there be job losses if this goes through? Yeah, you're, like I said, when, every time you increase the cost of doing business in the state of Florida, uh, it's going to cost jobs. It always does. And, and, and it's the same battle that we have every day. It's very, very competitive. Um, you know, and with the policies that have been put in the last four years with Governor Scott, you've seen an increase of people coming back to Florida. And we don't want to see that momentum broken down by uh, a policy that's uh, driven out of Washington, D.C. So what do we do? I mean, I, I'm guessing there's nothing on the November ballot that would affect this, right? This is something still in the future? Yeah, this is the future. And what we're trying to do is, is, is uh, educate the consumers, as you can see by the poll. You know, everybody's for a, a good environment, but there's going to be a balance between what it costs uh, out of our pockets uh, to the benefit that we're going to increase. So if, you, if you've got a real small increase uh, in greenhouse uh, gas emissions, you know, what's the cost to the consumer? What's the cost it's going to cost us? Okay. Because every time it costs us more money, it's like a tax increase. You know, we don't get a benefit out of that. So can you, can you give us the details about the statement you made earlier about one-third of the expenses from the, uh, the, the gas emissions laws? What, what is that? What, what do they actually pay for? <laughs> we, we, what we pay, you know, for our electrical costs, for when you go in to fill up, you know, our pumps are run out of electricity. Well, you know, our number one cost at a convenience store is labor. Number two is uh, credit card fees from MasterCard and Visa. And number three is electricity. So if our electrical wow. costs are going to increase, you know, if I think the, I think last year our members paid in the state of Florida about $177 million in electrical costs to run their convenience stores. Now, if you increase that 10%, it's okay. $17 million. Wow, that is, that is a big difference. Now, why... Why is that good for Connecticut and bad for us? Well, I think a policy that's run based on a national uh, policy that EPA is trying to put in, they're trying to balance it between 50 states. And they're trying to say that, well, this policy works in Connecticut. It may not work in Florida, but sorry, Florida's going to come along for the ride. And the same thing, you know, and I think Florida knows what they want to do much better than what is being done in D.C. I'll give you an example on the convenience store side. Um, you know, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection set new regulations, and we did all double wall tanks for the state of Florida to protect the environment for gasoline stations. Right, right. Well, that policy is only in the state of Florida. It's not nationwide. But Florida knew exactly what is best for Florida. And our feeling is with this coalition – is the same thing here. We know what's best for Florida, and EPA up in D.C. may know, you know, what Connecticut needs or what Ohio needs or Maine or Alaska, but they don't know what the needs are of Florida. You know, Florida is basically a, a peninsula stuck out into the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, yeah. So, and we have that crosswind, uh, but 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 that crosswind eventually carries whatever the. The, the 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 bad stuff is that we put out into the air, right? I mean, or or does it dissipate somehow? It, you know, it dissipates. I mean, you know, uh, there's been studies that have been done that you know, ninety five percent of the uh, pollution is is created by uh, uh, naturally through plants and through um, emissions like that, like a volcano. Yeah. Uh, you know, how much how much of the regulation really makes sense, and and that's where we go to Florida. I mean, the same problem we have with bringing gasoline into the state of Florida. You know, it's all barged in. We don't have a pipeline. Uh, it's all transportation in. But we know what we're doing, and we know what's best for uh, the state of Florida. And that's what we'd like to see is, is a policy that makes sense for the state of Florida, not what makes sense for for the administration up in uh, Washington, D.C. Okay. I, I appreciate that you came on such in, so soon after we had this news piece here. But uh, I, I want to uh, allow listeners to ask you questions. Are you okay with that? Sure. All right. Ned Bowman is our guest. He is with the Florida Petroleum Marketers and Convenience Store Association. Are you in Tallahassee right now? No, I'm actually, uh, I'm in Orlando. Oh, in, Ar um, in Orlando. Okay. Okay. Uh, we do have some calls coming in, so uh, let me take a few of them and you can answer their questions. Good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air now with Ned Bowman. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bowman. I understand these regulations are coming down from the administration and will be going through 
the EPA and coming out as new regulations, by, thus bypassing Congress and any kind of uh, uh, vote that could be taken on. Number two is I believe their latest figures are totally flawed. Yes, we had a lot more CO2 uh, because of the winter, but also in the winter, your air or atmosphere is more condensed because of the cold, and that would uh, skew any uh, other readings that uh, they may come up with. And I think uh, they're using this fact that the air being more dense and colder would actually hold more CO2, and they're, they're actually coming up with, a, I believe, false figures, just another way to stick it to the American people and to destroy our economy and uh, our way of life. And I'd like your comment on that, and I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I think it's just an overreach from EPA, and, uh, you know, their data um, – is skewed, and they're constantly trying to bypass Congress. And you were asked earlier about what our uh, consumers can do is, you know, contact your congressman and express concerns about EPA overreaching and not going through Congress and, and through the process that really needs to be done. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about jobs and you're talking about what, what the data is, I think there's more that more has to be done on that side of it, like the uh, caller said. Right. And, and traditionally, we've had uh, differences in, in the EPA rules, like uh, California for example, is different than us. So there wouldn't be anything unusual about, about uh, itemizing it state by state. Am I right? You're right. I mean, absolutely. And, and you look at it and, you know, Florida is different than California. California is different than uh, Minnesota. I mean, each state is unique. I mean, uh, and I think each state should set their own policies on this. And that's a, one, you know, one policy fits all. I yeah. mean, and, you know, the air quality and it is different up in New York City than it is down here in Florida. Yeah. All right, Ned, let's um, uh, go to another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Ned Bowman. Good morning. Interesting topic. There is a certain segment of the environmental movement that will use any excuse to, you know, try to restrict our energy. And, and I remember 10 years ago people used to say, and it's not going to do any good to drill because it won't lower gas prices for 10 years. That was their excuse for not wanting to drill in certain places. Well, now we're in the middle of an oil boom in the United States, hmm. and I know gas prices are a complicated issue, but gas prices are falling. So those people who were trying to block us were absolutely right, but their excuse was so feeble. And I just want to ask our guest. Is there any limit to the excuses that they're going to come up with to try to restrict our energy production? And I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Ned? Yeah, I, you know, I, I firmly believe that. I think uh, in, in North America, between uh, Canada, America, and down in Mexico, we have the largest oil reserves. And I think that, you know, by not building the Exxon, uh, the Excel pipeline, and not being proactive, uh, you know, it's costing us jobs. It's also, you know, everybody wants to be energy independent. Well, this is one way that we can become energy independent. And now the, uh, the uh, I guess, the uh, song or the dance has changed, and they don't want to do that because it's going to have an environmental impact. But it w originally it was all about, you know, becoming energy independent. And now all of a sudden it's not about energy independent. And um, so, yeah, we struggle with that because it does create an awful lot of jobs and it creates a lot of wealth for a lot of people. Hmm. And this is also going to affect the farmers, too. Correct. It's going to affect them no. big time, right? Yeah. Don't I mean, this is a big deal for this. They're probably as much using of electricity as a, as a convenience store would mm -hmm. be, right? Yeah, you know, it, you know, you get into the refineries. And if you go through the list of the coalition that are, you know, you got manufacturers, uh, you've got uh, the refineries, you've got the convenience stores, you've, you've got a big coalition of a lot of stakeholders. And, and our concern is, is the cost to the public. So uh, the, you know, I'm, I'm walking a little fine line here by asking you this question, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but... And, and it's it's going to be a, it's going to sound like a political partisan answer, I think, when I ask you this. But is our decision about who is the next governor somehow related to this? I mean, obviously, if if we only have the two choices, um, 
will one be more likely to help us out with this than the other? Um, I, I, w- I would say that the uh, dealing with the Republicans is a lot easier than dealing with the Democrats. Usually you see that the Democrats are very uh, focused, as you can see with the administration up in D.C., uh, and they're trying to get by the Republican House up in D.C., the congressman. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think, you know, um, I'm not... I think from a policy standpoint, the present governor that's in there uh, is more business friendly and, uh, and has done a great job with the environment also. So he's done a balancing act um, from as far as we're concerned from uh, the uh, oil industry and the convenience store industry that he's been very proactive um, to help us and, and to bring more common sense approach and an approach that you know deals with Florida specifically, not dealing with the national uh, policies. Okay. Uh, We need to take a little break, and uh, we'll be right back. If you have a question, by the way, or want to make a comment, you've got about a good 10 minutes to do so. Uh, Just let me take a little break, and we'll be right back. The number, if you'd like to call in, is 622-9622. Ned Bowman on the the phone from the Florida Petroleum Marketers and Convenience Store Association, and we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Some clouds this morning, then more sunshine later today with a high of 77 to 81. Tonight, fair skies with a low of 54 inland, about 67 right on the beaches. Tomorrow, times of clouds and sunshine, the high 77 to 81. It'll be mainly clear tomorrow night, then for Saturday, mostly sunny, the high 78 to 82. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. News Talk 1370, WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information hungry, better educated, high income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732-8000. 732-8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370, WOCA. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara. And me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment. Right here on WOCA The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. All right, eight minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for listening this morning. Ned Bowman is on the phone helping us understand some of the the decisions that we need to make in the state of Florida regarding uh, the Environmental Protection Agency's rules that might be coming down the pike soon. Mm -hmm. I was thinking something during the break, Ned, uh, that I wanted to share with you, and it's got to do with awareness of, of the general population. We talk about this all the time when it comes to any issue. But the one that resonates with me that seems like it applies to this is this. When we were talking before the Affordable Care Act was passed, we were talking about it and we, somebody brought up that, you know, if you, if you ask everybody who's, the, who's the, uh, the vice president, they don't even answer that one correctly. If you ask them, you know, what are the, the, the uh, different levels of, of the government, they don't even know that. But if you ask them, do you want to pay more? for this, this health insurance, they'll, they'll say, no, of course not. So if they believe they're, paying, they're going to pay less, this is the argument before, then they're going to want it. Now that they found out, uh-oh, we're not really paying less, now you have a lot of people say, wait a minute, I don't really like this anymore. I thought you told me it was going to cost less and it's costing more in a roundabout way, either more for prescriptions or more in, on, on the backside of some things. I think that might be true with this, too. The average person might not know all the details about the Environmental Protection Agency's regulations, but at the same time, they do understand, what? I'm going to have to pay more? That, I think, is the the easy-to-understand message here. 
Yeah, you know, if you, if you go back through and you look at EPA, um, they're going to set a goal line today, and, you know, in five more years, they're going to move the goal line again, and then they're going to move it again. And, you know, what is the cost benefit, and what has the study been done? And well, to your first caller's point is that, you know, I don't think they've done enough research on this, and I think they're jumping the gun. And I think this is best laid into the states um, like Florida to make a decision. I think you've got a great leadership team that's up in Tallahassee. You've got very smart legislators, and they understand it, and they can work through and work with our congressional district, uh, con- congressional delegation uh, to formulate a policy that makes sense for the state of Florida and, and for the consumers because um, our members and everybody else doesn't want to see their uh, electrical, electrical costs go up um, for no reason. And there's no benefit. Yesterday we had a gentleman on who was representing the, the solar power segment of the future. Uh, it, was, it wasn't just solar. It was solar, wind, and the bio stuff where you're, mm-hmm. you're using garbage to, to make energy? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what he said made sense to us, too. But it sounds like what he's talking about is in the future, quite a bit, like 10 years. Um, do, do you see that, that mindset working hand-in-hand hand with what we have now? I think there's got to be a balance between um, all through. You need some renewables. Um, and I'll give you an example. You know, uh, Secretary Putnam uh, came out with the Energy Star tax holiday. And if you go talk to the appliance stores, they had record sales over that time period. And what that showed is that when you offer an incentive to consumers, they can go out and they're going to save a lot of money when you turn in a 30-year-old refrigerator for a brand-new energy-efficient one. So that's the policy of the state of Florida. And I think there's a balance between renewable energy um, existing energy. So if you take all of them put together, I think it makes sense. Um, but you just can't have one. You can't have one extreme, and then you're going to switch, switch to another extreme. It just doesn't work for a policy. But the policy's got to be set by the by Florida, not by a, a national uh, group. So the should should uh, President Obama get involved in this, or should he let uh, Congress and the individual states decide? I think the individual states should decide. I think that, you know, uh, and also if you're going to get the data out of EPA, I think it should be vetted through Congress. I don't think that they should uh, be well, on the debate right. on and, their own. And when the president works with Congress, he is literally working with a representative from each district in each state. So uh, so obviously you'd have all those representatives from the state of Florida expressing what Florida's needs are. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, if you would yes. work with them, I mean, yep. the, the executive order approach doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense in most no. cases. In, in most cases, you're right, Larry. And, and, and I don't think that's the policy that should be uh, put forth is someone who decides in D.C. what's best for Florida. It may not be best for Florida. It may be best for Connecticut or uh, Massachusetts or Montana, but it's not best what's for Florida. And I think that's the most important thing is Florida – uh, like I said, working with uh, Governor Scott and working with uh, the Secretary of DEP, um, Herschel Vineyard, uh, they can come up and formulate a policy that makes sense for the state of Florida, not under uh, EPA's gun that has to be done. Well, everybody votes and everybody does not listen to talk radio. Um, I've said this many, many times. Mm-hmm. The folks who do listen to talk radio pay more attention to things like this than p- people who don't. It's just, to me, it seems like a no-brainer that that's probably true. Um, and the ones who don't are usually influenced, hopefully, by the ones who do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted you, if uh, as we get near the end of the conversation, if you could give us a website or something, maybe so that those who do listen, they want to share the factual information, because the factual information is always a uh, a great selling point. Maybe the poll that was, re- that was referred to earlier, maybe that's available online somewhere? Sure. Uh, www.betterenergyfuture.org. www.betterenergyfuture.org. Uh, there's a lot of information that's there. It's uh, very uh, educational uh, for your listeners uh, and for the public to understand uh, what is really needed for the state of Florida and nationally. Okay. All right. And, and I think some of the things you said did... did address some of the uh, voting we'll be doing in November, in a couple of weeks, especially the governor's race. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you do, Ned. Good to hear from you again, by the way. You're in Tallahassee. You're in Orlando. You know, we're right between the two. 
<laughs> if you ever want, you can come into the studio instead of doing it on the phone. You know, I, I'm... So you may have missed. Gallon, it's probably about an hour. But I appreciate <laughs> your time and dropping time and uh, everything you do for the uh, state of Florida by educating your listeners. Well, we couldn't do it without you. I mean, we just have the microphone. You've got the knowledge. Ned, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Uh, Ned Bowman, we, we will post the website that Ned gave us on our Facebook page. Thank you, Ned. Have a great day, guys. All right, thank you. All right, we will take a little break, and we'll be right back. When it really counts, depend on the source for the latest weather updates, keeping you ahead of the storm. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The mother of the Canadian shooting suspect speaks out. Susan Bebo telling the Associated Press she's crying for the victims of the shooting, not her son, and that she's sorry. Canadian police say Michael Zahoff Bebo worked alone when he gunned down that soldier at Ottawa's War Memorial yesterday, then opened fire in Parliament before being shot and killed by the sergeant at arms. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers. In another attack Monday, a man the Prime Minister called an ISIL inspired terrorist ran over two soldiers in Quebec. One was killed. Both attackers were being watched by investigators who feared they had jihadist ambitions. The Maryland man's Secret Service say climbed the White House fence last night, now charged with felonies for assaulting a police dog and making threats. And two Delta Airlines planes clipping wings as they were getting ready to take off from Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport last night. The cause of the collision, not yet known. Fox News, we report, you decide. an angry monkey screaming at you? Nope, it's your windshield wipers. And they're literally crying out for you to replace them. Lucky for you, Napa now has 30% off select visibility products. That's 30% off wiper blades, headlight bulbs, and more. So cut all the monkey business and conquer the job with Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores while supplies last. Offer expires 10 31 14. Pete's Parrot Emporium. Pete. Pete. How may I help you? Help. 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 Be quiet. Help. Quiet. 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 Silence. Silence. If only everything in business was as easy as Wix. Wix's drag-and-drop website builder makes it simple to create your stunning website yourself. Just choose a design from hundreds of beautiful Wix templates and customize it however you want. Go to Wix.com today. It's easy and free. Wix.com. Got a garden and we've got a show for you called you've got a garden with your host master gardener carol ann baldwin carol ann answers your questions about your flowers your veggies your grass your trees even questions about your bugs and she's only on woca so don't miss carol ann baldwin and you've got a garden each tuesday from 9 a.m to 10 a.m right here on woca the source News Talk 1370. WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information hungry, better educated, high income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732 8000. 732 8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370. WOCA. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara. And me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment. Right here on WOCA The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. 
Now is the time to take advantage of Florida Credit Union CD specials. Our 36-month CD comes in at 1.26% APY, a 24-month that's working for you at 1.0% APY, and our 12-month at 0.75% APY. All CD rate specials require $10,000 minimum. With friendly service and rates like these, it's not hard to see why Florida Credit Union has your CD options covered. Florida Credit 